Uh, there we go. Uh, we, the last uh, in this round is Adita Seekin, the Instruction and Access Services Librarian at Manchester University in Indiana, uh, talking about Zoopim Live Chat for Libraries. Uh, go ahead and take it away. Hi, yeah, I'm Adita. I hope everybody can hear me okay and see my screen. Yep, you're all good. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to be talking about Zoopim. It's um, a live chat service that our library recently started using back in end of October, early November. Um, and just about our university, we have about 1,200 students full-time on our main campus, and we also have um, another campus on in Fort Wayne, that's our pharmacy campus, um, and they're also heavy library users. So we have about 1,500 students in total that access our resources um, and that we're serving with this chat program. And uh, we're part of a consortium that has been talking about adding a chat feature, but as with being a big organization, it's a long time to get started um, and a little cumbersome and being impatient, I just decided to go ahead and start researching options for us to use on our own. Um, and I had come from a much bigger university before I started here, and so we had LibChat, um, which I was never a particularly big fan of. And I don't know if that was just implementation there, but um, I didn't feel like it was very user friendly. And I also went out and looked for some more alternatives, and a lot of those just seemed um, kind of like they were made with GeoCities back in the day, and so it didn't seem like they had very much support or infrastructure. They didn't seem like they would be very around very long. Um, and I didn't really want to get invested with something that I didn't think was going to last. And a lot of them also didn't really seem to integrate well with our site or with where we wanted to use it. Um, and then, of course, things like LibChat or the other big official library ones, those are expensive. Um, so when I was doing some searching, I came across Zopim, which is technically, as you'll probably notice, um, more for sales and customer service for businesses, um, but we found that it works really well for us too, and they are much more cost effective. Um, and I actually have an article that we had found from John Carroll University's Griselli Library that they kind of compared some different chat options that libraries have, and they had mentioned Zopin, which is one of the reasons why that we had considered it so heavily. It was after I found it, but they gave us good ideas about the triggers, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but I'll include the um, article the link to their article later. Um, so here's the Zopin main page. Uh, I had started with my own email um, uh, free trial with them, as they say, free for 14 days, no credit card required. Um, the thing with their free trial is, though, that they'll give you the advanced version. And we knew that we didn't want to pay that much for it. Um, so I actually asked them to cancel the trial version, because you'll see it matches up with everything from the advanced, and just take us back down to the free version so we could see what that looked like. Um, and actually, just a few days later, we decided that it seemed to be a pretty good fit, but we probably want to go for the basic. Um, luckily, they also gave us a 20% off discount um, for having done the free trial, so we were able to use that to purchase a year's worth of service from them. So in all, we paid, and you'll notice that this is by agent. So if you have two agents, you're going to be paying twice as much. And so we ended up paying about $100 for a year's worth of service for one agent. And I'll show you kind of how that works for us. So we all log in under just, well, it doesn't say there, of course, but our, um, our main librarian account. So librarians at manchester.edu. And we just switch out accounts. Well, we switch out our name and our profile picture every time that we go to uh, do chat. And this is the dashboard. This is mainly where you're going to be working from. They do um, have a mobile version of it, but I'm not a very big fan. I've at least, um, we've only tried it on iPhones, and it tends to log you out every time the screen goes off. So that's not super helpful. Um, we've used it once and have actually managed a few chat questions on there, but for the most part, we just stick to the desktop version. Um, and since we're not paying for the advanced version with all the fun analytics and things, this is kind of what we get. This is a default. And you'll see that we have our page views, 
our total visits, our unique visitors, and the number of chats. That is not an x-axis. That is actually the number of chats that we get. And I'm actually getting a chat right now, for real. This is not, oh. Oh, hi, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for tagging it up. Um, so that's what it looks like when we get a chat. And this is what it looks like on our website. Um, We've integrated it in a couple of different places, and I'll go back to the analytics once I can show you this. I'm always startled when I get a chat. Um, it makes a little squeaky noise for me. Um, so on our website, we actually integrated it into, on the website, it's the widget for it is hidden in our side navigation, and it appears down here. On LibGuides, we've hidden the coding in the footer, and it still appears down here. And one of the things that I like best about Zopen is the fact that if you move between pages, your chat moves with you. And if this person's navigating around at all, um, I can actually see where they're coming from and where they're going to, along with where they're at, and what browser they're using, what service they're on, etc. cetera. Um, and I really wish that more students would put in their contact information because it, they always end up disappearing at some point. Um, so back to analytics, we can see the hourly, daily, monthly, weekly, and monthly. So this is about when we started, and we've been increasing the number of people that we've had ever since. Um, generally, we just have maybe one or two chats a day. Um, this is over a week that this is 13 there. Um, but we have noticed that most of our chats are actually research questions. And you'll notice here that almost all of these start with, hello, is there anything I can help you with? That's because we have a trigger, which I'll show you in a second, that prompts users to talk to us. Um, and just like the article that we found earlier said, um, that they also mostly got substantive questions when students were being prompted. Um, so a lot of times, and I'll show you the trigger down here, we have a trigger that says that when a user has been on the site for three or more minutes and they're inactive, which is our way of guessing that they're lost, um, that they'll be prompted with a message asking them for if they need any help. And that's the majority of the times that we've gotten questions. You'll see that a few times, the ones that don't have that, there's two on that page, um, we've had people just prompt themselves to talk to us. But a lot of the times, it's them being asked by the software if they need any help. Um, a lot of times we'll say, they'll say no, and we'll say, OK, that's cool. Feel free to ask us later. Um, and we feel like that's, it's been really good for kind of creating a relationship with students that they know that they can come anytime they need help. Um, and it's just us librarians who do it. We are here um, usually from at least 8 AM till 5 or 8 PM, depending on who's on it. Um, and that was the thing. We're only paying for one agent, so we have to switch this out. Um, obviously, we don't need departments with one person. Uh, we haven't banned anybody. There are triggers. For our actual accounts, though, this is where when we switch out, um, I'll swap this out. If, say, Darla's on, I'll swap it out for my name, my department, and my picture. Um, and it's, it takes like 10 seconds to switch it out, so it's a pretty quick and easy thing to do whenever the next person needs to hop on. Um, so that's been worth it, you know, just to have one. And <laughs> for the sake of taking a look at this again, when you're actually interacting with um, a patron at night, I love the fact that you can get a full screen message. I couldn't get that with LibChat, and that drove me nuts. Um, like I said, you can see where they're coming from and where they're going to. That'll also pop up in the message itself. You can see if you're giving them a link for some place that they should navigate to. You can see if they followed that or not. Um, a lot of the times, I can tell if pharmacy students are talking to me because it'll say that they're coming from Indianapolis, even though they're in Fort Wayne. Um, and especially when we were having an issue with some of our databases, it was useful also that I could get their IP addresses. I could see their browsers and the platforms that they were on to see if maybe that was having an influence on the difficulties they were having. Um, and the patron can also put in their name, their email address, their contact information, and send themselves a transcript of the chat. Um, and I can get one also. Our records are kept in here, obviously. But on the patron side of it, we'll reconnect. When they go to leave, and this is one of the only things that I don't like, is to actually close out of the chat. It takes a couple of steps. Um, but that's when they have the option of sending themselves a transcript. And we've also found out that they can rate these, 
which the first time I did it, I just saw that they had rated the chat as good, and I was like, I really hope that that's the best option that they could pick, and thankfully it was. Um, so yeah, I tried to do that really, really fast, and I hope I came in in time, so if anybody has any questions, please let me know, and here's my info. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, no, perfect timing. And our yeah. one question for you is, uh, how are you promoting this on campus? Well, we haven't super promoted it. Um, one of the things that we did is we have screens around campus that advertise various events. So we have one that's up there, and it actually comes through. I have no control over this rotating thing. Um, there it is. There's our chat one. We have this on there, and then it actually linked to the Facebook page. Well, the other one did. Um, that mentions it as well. I've tried also, whenever I'm talking with faculty, when I'm doing a session with them, to mention, and in any you know sessions that I do for their classes, hey, we have this chat function. It's super helpful. If you're there, we're there at the same time, and you're going to be talking to an actual librarian who knows what they're doing. Um, so it's been a lot of word of mouth, and we've gotten a really good response from it so far. Great. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Adina, for that. And yeah, everybody on time. And thank you, everybody, for uh, our lightning round. We are going to take our next break, and we'll be doing some checking in with our next presenter and whatnot. And so um, we will be bringing our slides back up, and we will be back with you shortly, and quite possibly keep an eye out for a poll also. We'll probably be doing one of those in this uh, round of breaks. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, uh, we're going to do another poll, and uh, yeah, let's do that one. Let's, we're going to do the where are you poll at this point. So uh, east or west of the Mississippi, uh, Canada, Europe, or other, and, uh, you know, Saskatchewan, we want to hear from you. Ah, okay, our first one was from Canada, so all right, we're, and we'll leave that up for a few minutes. Thanks.